What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Stand Tall. It's October 7th. We're going to dive straight into the Art of War chapter entitled The Army on the March, verse 31. If the enemy sees an advantage to be gained and makes no effort to secure it, the soldiers are exhausted. 32. If birds gather on any spot, it is unoccupied. Clamor by night betokens nervousness. And 33. If there is a disturbance in the camp, the general's authority is weak. If the banners and flags are shifted about, sedition is afoot. If the officers are angry, it means that men are weary. Interesting. Yep. <clears throat> if the men are complaining to the officers, then the officers get angry. And so it is safe to assume that that might be what's going on. Let's jump over and get some insights from an alternate translation. I think always helps uh, to get a perspective on the matter. <clears throat> Master Sun says, when they see an advantage but do not advance on it, they are weary. Zhang Yu says to this, when the officers and soldiers are tired out, they cannot be made to fight. So even if they do see an advantage that can be gained, the generals do not dare to proceed. So this is why Sun Tzu talks about feigning a lot of things and being wary when the enemy feigns certain tactics. And so this could be something, right? A lot of these reflections, you need to counter it and think, okay, so if I'm going to present an advantage to the enemy, right? So you've got to find this, this I don't know, weakness that you can exploit in order to draw them out. Master Sun says, if birds are gathered there, the place has been vacated. Li Quan says, if there are birds on a citadel, the army has fled. I mean, if the end of the world ever happens, then this is like definitely good to know. <laughs> I, I think if birds are gathered there, the place has been vacated. I think there's probably something deeper there that can be associated with real life. Like, I guess vacant thoughts. Bird thoughts, right? Birds, you know, tweet, tweet, fly around, peck, peck, tweet, tweet, fly around. You know, I don't know if they have like a conscious purpose, you know, as if they know what they're doing or they're just doing what they're born to do because it's in their nature. And so maybe if like your birdie thoughts are gathered around, your mind has been vacated. And so just be aware of those, of that. Master Sun says, if there are calls in the night, they are afraid. Cao Cao says that when soldiers call in the night, it means the general is not brave. I'm not sure we're getting the full context of call. What that means for that time period. Do move. They are fearful and uneasy, so they call to each other to strengthen themselves. Hmm. Chen Hao says, if there is one person in ten with courage, even though the other nine are timid and cowardly, depending on the bravery of that one man, they can still be secure. Now, if the soldiers call out in the night, it is because the general has no courage, as Cao Cao says. Cao Cao. So, hmm. Okay, so we're going to go through these. If the army is unsettled, it means that the general is not taken seriously. Li Quan says, if the general lacks authority, the army is disorderly. Master Sun says, if signals move, that means they are in confusion. Zhang Yu says, signals are used to unify the group. So if they move about unsteadily, it means the ranks are in disarray. Master Sun says, if their emissaries are irritable, it means they are tired. So, um, okay, and Jialin says, people are irritable, irritable when they are fatigued. Jialin, so insightful. Um, <clears throat> these almost speak for themselves in the corporate world, the business world, the modern world. If the army is unsettled, it means the general is not taken seriously, right? So, like, you can see this in a lot of companies, and it happens over time, and there's the ebbs and flows. Emissary, irritable emissaries, I mean, that one, fairly straightforward in its reflection. You know, if you're going to be sending out salespeople and such, and they're not happy, they're not going to do a good job. All right, so let's go over to the Daily Stoic. October 7th, a selfish reason to be good. The person who does wrong does wrong to themselves. The unjust person is unjust to themselves, making themselves evil. I've been reflecting on a lot of something similar to that lately, <clears throat> especially because... 
you know, I, re I was like trying to put some shorts together based off of these videos. And, and one of them, I kind of like talked about the id and the shadow self. And then I have a buddy that we get really deep and talk about like alternate dimensions, interdimensionality, and just like really fun things like that. And if we are, if this is our universe, like if we are perception is reality and like all the philosophical stuff that you can kind of read about and, and think about. So it's like, it's a, it's projection. Okay. The person who does wrong does wrong to themselves. The unjust person is unjust to themselves. So it's like everything that's wrong in the world, you're kind of putting out there and interpreting it that way. And so you're just doing it to yourself. And I also think biblically in terms of reflecting on it, like biblically in terms of like, Jesus is in all of us, right? So that's something that's taught from when we're young. And so it's like, do unto others as you would do unto yourself. Like we are, we are the collective subconscious. We are Jesus. We are God. We are the id. We are these things. And so because it is us in our life and we are in control of it, when we do wrong, we're just doing it to ourselves because we're doing, we're, we're putting it into the world and it's reflecting to us. And so there's that. The next time you do something wrong, try to remember how it made you feel. Rarely does one say, I felt great. There's a reason there's often vomit at crying scenes. Instead of the catharsis the person thought they'd feel when they let themselves get out of control or when they got their revenge, they ended up making themselves sick. We feel a version of this when we lie, oh, when we cheat, oh, and when we screw someone over. Oh, everyone's done that. We've all done those things. We've all lied. We've all cheated. We've all purposely or accidentally screwed someone over. So in that split second before your ill-gotten gains kick in, ask, how do I feel about myself? In that moment when fear rises in your throat because you suspect you may get caught really worth it, Self-awareness and wrongdoing rarely go together. If you need a selfish reason to not do wrong, put yourself in touch with these feelings. They're a powerful disincentive. Okay. So now that we have some context around what the daily meditation is from the daily stoic, and now we go back, confusion and signals move, irritable emissaries, calls in the night, bird thoughts gathered, um, all of the stuff, you know, if the army isn't settled, it means the general is not taken seriously. And so the army is going to inflict this pain on themselves. Like all of this stuff is kind of like, if you are not disciplined and seeing this within yourself, you're not going to keep standing tall. It's, it's going to be tough. So that's why we keep doing this and, and try to remind us of these things because without it, what are we? We'll see you on the next one.